Hello everybody, this is Mike1217, welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. This is dark in here, what the hell? Uh, we are about to start up the forest temple, the first dungeon in the game, finally. And I'm in much better spirits right now. Again, apologies about the last episode, I was a little bit... Yeah, I was a little bit... Yeah, I don't even know what to say. It was just a long, annoying week. With, you know, the first wave of exams and stuff going on in school, so. But that's all pretty much over with, and it looks like next week it's going to be nice and easy for me. And, it, and I'm, it's a weekend right now, so I can enjoy that. Nothing like the weekend to calm my mind, and nothing like some good old Twilight Princess. And I am definitely ready to do this temple. I think part of the reason why in some of these episodes I've been kind of... Um, you know, I've, <laughs> I've been, uh, like, I, I feel like I've done a poor job of being enthusiastic, and I think part of the reason is I'm not totally prepared. Like, it, it's pretty clear that, you know, I'm, you know, I, I have my brain farts from time to time. That's because I don't really do, I haven't been doing a lot of preparation for these episodes. Because I tend to, like, to just jump right into these. But, <laughs> I, I can see right now that, you know, it's better that I just do preparation. That way I n know more of what I'm doing. So I definitely do know what to expect here. So hopefully I can get through this pretty quickly. Now, we have once again met this monkey friend. He's apparently been pretty prominent in, in this game so far in the beginning. It's, you know, you, you would think he'd be a... Oh, by the way, here's the finishing blow. I think it's the first time I've ever used that. Maybe I just used it unconsciously in the last room. There are some... Oh, man, my voice. What the hell? There are some moblins or whatever they're, whatever they're called in there. But yeah, this monkey has been pretty prominent in the beginning of the game. We chased him before it turned into a wolf, and then we saw him in ghost form. Oh, yeah, if you light all four of these. Uh, this is one of those classic little things. You have to light all the torches with your lamp in this case, and most of the other 3D Zeldas you have Deku sticks that you light. This game doesn't have Deku sticks. It's all replaced by the lantern in case you haven't guessed that. But yeah, we can get over here now. And actually cut scene right away. Short cut scene. Kind of a dangerous looking bridge there. The monkey can get out and get across just fine because he's light. And actually, we don't even intend. Oh yeah, that's where he turns around. This guy shows up. Oh, he does have a name. I forgot what he's called. But he throws his boomerang at the bridge. Now we can't get across. That door over there is where we wanted to get to. And now he's gonna. Yeah, you have to get used to seeing monkey ass throughout this, because that's part of the theme of this temple. Not monkey ass, but monkeys in general. And if you remember earlier on, um, I. I remember myself mentioning that this game aim was, at least this is what some people told me before I got the game, is that, or maybe this is something that I read, but, but, but basically going into this game, I was given the notion that animals would play a big part in the game, and it would be kind of a, I don't want to say gimmick, because, you know, the word gimmick is a word that people don't like, but... I can't think of any better words, so, you know, I, I came into this game thinking that monkeys were going to play a big part, and by the way, right here, these are, uh, ashy bomb flowers, once you attack them, they'll light up and blow up, so they're actually kind of enemies in this game, because in previous Zelda games, bomb flowers are just kind of there, and you pick them up, and they serve as replacement bombs, when I mean, you don't have your regular bombs. Uh, in here, we're going to be introduced to a new character, and a very, very useful character, especially for me doing LPs, and, you know, not, probably not going to be recording all these dungeons in one sitting, though I do, I do, though I do plan on doing this one in one sitting. Anyway, this guy is named Uku, I, don't, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, but he serves as a way to save your, uh, spot in the middle of a dungeon. Oh my god, my mucus. I'm ugh, I might have to <laughs> go take a spit. Not a shit. I gotta go take a spit pretty soon, so um yeah, if it starts to get worse I go spit out this crap. I had a cold recently 
Is it me or does Link look like he's kind of dull in that? Like, does his face look like he's kind of not happy about that? I don't know, but... Oh, I'm getting off into tangents again. That's not good. Uh, Uku serves as a way to save your spot in the middle of the dungeon and uh, end your playing session and come back to that spot you saved in. It serves the exact same purpose as Fror's Wind from Ocarina of Time. That way, you can, like, you know, I can use Uku right here, then turn off the game, then start up in this room as opposed to the beginning of the dungeon. I guess that's the best way to explain how Uku works. So, very useful for me if I don't feel like recording all these in one sitting, because it's kind of hard to do dungeons in one sitting. Okay, I'm gonna go spit. I'll be right back. There's always some stupid crap that interrupts me. Ugh, okay, um... We wanna go into this room? Actually, do we wanna go into this room? Um, I don't- I, I actually don't- Yeah, we do, we do, we do. We wanna go across here, make it across quickly. I'll explain what those platforms do once we come back here. Go into this door. Now I've completely lost my train of thought. Stupid mucus. It's always something. It's, you know, batteries going dead. I forget to turn my lights off, which I remember to do this time. And a bunch of... It's always some stupid crap that interrupts me while I'm recording these. It's really annoying. Okay, uh, you see that platform right there? I just rotated, and that's... That's also kind of a gimmick of this dungeon, or this rotating platform. And, uh, when you're in the outside parts of the dungeon like this, uh, there's, like, wind that blows periodically, like, gusts of winds every ten seconds or something like that. And whenever the wind blows... It'll make the propellers on those platforms start spinning, and the platforms will move at a 90 degree angle. And we'll be seeing those quite a bit in this dungeon. Okay, so let's continue on. And it's actually a uh, Skulltula. Those things, those fires are called Skulltulas. And use your slingshot to shoot its web. I guess you can shoot the Skulltula itself. And apparently, doesn't it die? Yeah, it dies whenever- I, I think because it lands in the water, there's water right below us. And I think that's what kills it, because I always get confused to why it dies. But now I think about it, I think that's it, okay. So I got a key earlier. Just, in this room, just go linearly. Like, it seems like there are split paths, but... You know, like, as soon as you come across the door, you can go in. Go into the door, don't just, you know, don't say, oh, I'll save the door for later. So now we have another monkey, and kind of get back to the whole monkey gimmick, which is something I, you know, was talking about earlier and then went off to one of my stupid tangents. Um, the main gimmick of this dungeon is monkeys, and this is what led me to believe this entire game would kind of follow this pattern where each dungeon would have, like, its own special gimmick animal that you would use to get throughout the dungeon. But, unfortunately, it, that didn't turn out to be the case. And I say well, for, unfortunately, because I really did want to see that. I thought that would have been a nice twist on the game. Anyway, to knock him down, you just roll into the thing twice. Yeah, make sure you, you, you do it twice. Like, really quickly. To knock it down. And these assholes will show up. And you can use some finishing blow. Oh, I guess I killed him. Never mind. Are they both dead? I guess they're both dead. I don't think you have... I, well, yeah, you do have to kill him, because... Uh, so something you notice about these enemies, I think I mentioned it... Oh, get up there! Uh, I think I mentioned it last time. Oh, by the way, you're gonna get to see what, what they help us do. They'll go on these ropes, and you can uh, swing across with them, and you, you'll be doing this a lot. This is how they serve as kind of the gimmick of the dungeon, is that they'll allow you to get across large gaps. And there'll be larger gaps we're gonna have to get across that will need more monkeys to make it. That makes sense. But one thing to keep in know about these monkeys is that um, whenever you're nearby an enemy, they'll get scared and they'll kind of freeze up, and um, you have to get rid of the enemies before they can move on with you. Okay, so you have to jump over here. That uh, cage over here we can't do much with right now, so we'll come back to that later. Just keep going here. Now that we have two monkeys, we can get to a different room. Let's get a lantern. I'm gonna try to save oil, because you really do need the lantern here. 
and I don't know of any places in the dungeon you can get refill, so I'm gonna try to be careful with this. Okay, so let's just use the monkeys to get across here. This is how we get back to the middle. I mean, we could also just jump down, but uh, apparently, and I don't know why, but you need both the monkeys to get over here. I haven't really done any tests with it and tried to come over here first after getting the first monkey. But this is just the way I've always done it, going left and then right. I don't know, maybe eventually I'll try it the other way and see if it actually works. But I think you have to go left first and then right. I don't exactly remember why. Don't quote me on that. Okay, so these enemies right here, these are different kinds of Deku Babas. I don't know if they have like a different name. They probably do, I just can't think of it. But these guys are a little bit more powerful Deku Babas. You, you slash them down and their head will kind of bop around a little bit. And then, yeah, they just take longer to kill. And they can be pretty annoying whenever they grab you. Uh, these flowers right here, um, you cannot attack them with your sword. Don't even try it. There's a different way that we kill them, and it's actually very important that we kill them. In fact, we have to kill them. Okay, so we have to take this bomb. Yeah, see, there's actually enemies in this game. Ugh. So it's a different twist on the bomb flowers. Um, what you have to do is actually throw a bomb flower into that plant, and that will kill it. And the reason why we had to do that is... It may seem like he's not in our way, I'm going to just jump over this gap, but actually, if you try to jump over the gaps that they're underneath, they will automatically eat you. So, you have to get rid of them, and there's a rock over there if you blow up, so let's go back and get our bomb flower. The best way to deal with these is just to use your shield, I guess. Or just slash them, that's fine. They're kind of hard to hit because they're so short. Alright, so take this. Gotta be quick with these. These... Oh, crap, I must have messed it up. Did I get it? Nope, we didn't hear my my uh, secret solved Zelda chime. And I do have my Wii remote turned off, like the sound, I should say. What the hell? Oh, yeah, yeah, you have to jump across. That's my fault. I shouldn't be trying to throw it across. But yeah, with the Wiimote, like, there's actually speakers on it in case you're not aware of that. And whenever you... Whenever you had the speakers on on your your Wiimote and you have that uh, puzzle solved Doo -doo 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 -doo! chime then it actually comes out of your Wiimote so I'm, I'm making sure and actually this game has a lot of sound effects that come out of the Wiimote like the sword swinging and a lot of other things so yeah I, I make sure I have it turned off so that the microphone doesn't pick it up actually I don't even like yeah, I, I had it off for Galaxy 2 as well. For that same reason. Okay. So we have some new enemies here. Again, not knowing what they're called, but I don't really care. And actually, what you want to do is roll into this. This took me a long time to figure out. That chest, or is it that? Yeah, this chest contains a small key. Because I think on the other side of this room is a locked door. What I noticed with this d dungeon and maybe the game in general is that a lot of the locked doors are opened by keys you get in the same room, like, which, you know, it's pretty, which makes the dungeons in these games rather linear. But I'll get back to that later. Let me explain these enemies. Uh, these guys can just kind of pop out of these dark tiles, and uh, if you walk over them, they'll send you flying, and they do a lot of damage from what I remember. So don't get hit by those. Uh, we can't kill them right now. We will be able to a little bit later. But we can't kill him right now. We gotta get the main dungeon item to do that. And and again, the commentary. I'm just assuming people haven't played this game, even though I'm sure most people watching this have. But you know, just the way I like to do it. There's a chest down there, but I don't think it has anything important. Maybe the compass. Actually, no, it doesn't have the compass. It doesn't have anything important. I would say that. Maybe rupees, which I do need. I. Would oh what the hell Skulltula, yeah Skulltulas in this game actually re resemble actual spiders since <laughs> you know unlike the ones in Ocarina of Time. I mean they do resemble spiders, but they're always hanging from the ceiling. They never actually like walk on the floor. Yeah, just about e oh every enemy you encounter in this game you can kill with the finishing blow. If they're not like extremely weak enemies like keys that die in one hit anyway. So let's try to get some rupees here. So I do want to make sure, you know, because I actually do want to buy that bottle from the 
uh, oil shop seller guy. Because I do plan on getting all the bottles, not for the sake of doing it, but just because, you know, it'd be nice to have all four bottles I can... In case I, you know, in case the, this three heart run does get more difficult than I expect it to, and kind of judging by the way, by the shitty way I've played so far, you know, it probably is gonna get pretty damn tough. I'm gonna need all the bottles I can get so I can carry potions and fairies and stuff. So I am gonna try to focus on getting all the bottles if I can. So the pattern of this dungeon is pretty. You know, it's pretty basic. It's and you're probably already noticing it. You know, you, you you go to a room, get a key, and free a monkey, and that's basically it. Uh, there's another room we can get to from here now. Uh, these vines don't lead to a place we can do anything in yet. Actually, I know where I want to go now. Uh, let's go over here and get rid of these spiders. I think they're kind of like mini scolas, mini scolas. I did a little research on this dungeon, so I know what some of the enemies here are called. Anyway, just jump over here, climb up. You can actually get two monkeys with you. I don't know if this guy fouls you. Some rooms the monkeys don't foul you in, and I think the ones that lead outside. I don't know, I, I don't know what determines it, but you can get another monkey there, as you can see. He's behind a locked door as well, just like the one we freed earlier. And there's the key that we need, but it just got eaten by something. What's this? Now, I don't know how many times you see this enemy. This is, of course, like a, a giant Deku Baba type of thing. And it's actually attached to one of those flowers that we killed earlier to jump the gap. We had, you know, we had to throw the bomb into it. And, it, and but we need to kill the Deku Baba first in order, before we can actually... Uh, kill the flower. That's what we ultimately want to do, is kill the flower he's attached to. Because that's what the key is. This guy takes a long time to kill, too. He doesn't stay down for very long. Oh, what the hell? Did he eat me? He just ate me! Or did I just kill him? I don't know what happened there. I felt like he just ate me, but then I just kind of popped out and killed him. Alright, so now we can throw a bomb into the flower. There's a bomb flower over here. And for whatever reason, I always have trouble with this. I always miss it for some reason, like the first couple tries. But got it first try there, and then once he dies, we'll be able to get the key. And I think this is the only instance in the game where you get a key um, just laying on the floor. Which is something very rare in the new Zelda games. Like, like in the older ones, you saw keys you know, laying on the floor all the time. They weren't always in chests. In fact... Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd say that in the older games, you found keys just laying on the floor more often than you found them in chest. But with the modern, three, the, mostly the 3D games, you almost always find them in chest. Let's see if we can get rupees here. Every, pretty much every room, as far as I know, where you free the monkeys in, there'll be pots of rupees in them. Unfortunately, we only got, only got like two there. That was a ripoff. So now we have two monkeys following us, and then we can pretty much just go back to the main room. And, um, I haven't quite explained why we're collecting these. But, it, again, remember back to the very beginning of this dungeon where that baboon got rid of the bridge that we wanted to get across. And remember how these things can actually, uh help you get, get across long gaps like that, and that's basically, that's how we're going to be getting across that gap, is with these monkeys, and I believe we have all of them. We need four monkeys to get across that gap, and I believe we have all four of them. I haven't quite paid much attention. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have all four of them. Apparently I can't count to four. And, yeah, we should be fine. Um... And, judging by my timer, we're about up to 20 minutes, so this is a good place to stop the episode. And, uh, next time on Twilight Princess, we will, uh, cross that gap and deal with that baboon. So, this is Mike127, and I'll see you then.